Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Sandra and I make videos all about cybersecurity, having a career in technology, as well as work vlogs. So today's topic I have gotten many, many questions about and it is bug bounty programs. So feel free to skip around in the timestamps in the video. Just at a high level, a bug bounty program is basically some kind of monetary value that a company or an organization offers to different individuals that are willing to find some kind of vulnerability or bugs in their applications or systems. So basically, a company can post some kind of listing for a bug bounty, and if you happen to find some bug or vulnerability, report it to them, document it for them, then they'll give you some kind of compensation or recognition in exchange. Now, of course, all the bugs range from super small minor bugs to the very serious ones that you might hear about on the news, which, by the way, I actually recently made a video on the top 10 security vulnerabilities based on the OWASP top 10. So you can definitely also check out that video linked below. Okay, so that at a very high level is basically all you need to know about what a bug bounty program is. And I'll talk about a few examples of different bug bounty programs and websites towards the end of this video. But for now, we can go into how to get started with a bug bounty program and what exactly are the requirements to actually be successful and actually find a bug. Okay, so since the main goal of a bug bounty program is to find some kind of vulnerabilities, obviously it would really help if you had some kind of web application pen testing experience. But again, this isn't necessarily required because on the other hand, if you are a web developer or have done some kind of full stack development in your background, then these skills can also help you because as someone who is a seasoned developer, you also know where the pitfalls are and also where sneaky vulnerabilities or bugs can hide in code. And another thing that I would add here is that no matter what background you come from, just picking up basic pen testing skills and tools like Burp Suite, Remina, Metasploit, etc., which I can also link a video below on the top seven tools for cybersecurity. But almost all these tools are either open source or have some kind of free community edition that you can use to practice with yourself. And I think this is really important because just because you didn't come from a cybersecurity background doesn't mean that you can't do pen testing or any of these bug bounty programs because at the end of the day, you might have a completely different mindset mindset of where to look for bugs that someone who has been a pen tester for years and years may not necessarily think to even look just because they have that experience already and they may just go for a certain route based on all their previous experiences combined but with someone coming in with fresh eyes and a completely different perspective on what to even look for in a web application for vulnerabilities that set of fresh eyes is actually really good to have because you're the one that's going to be looking for those weird peculiar things that a normal pen tester may not even be thinking about anymore so just a few of the high level skills that you might need when you're starting to look into bug bounty programs and maybe how to get started with one even as a beginner. Just having basic knowledge of networking is actually really important just in terms of the OSI stack, network IPs, MAC addresses, just so you know how computers communicate with each other because that is definitely going to be a big area where potential bugs might be. Knowing how servers talk to each other and pass data to each other and very high level things like that are really going to help you understand how all of the backend pieces of a website work together. The next thing is being more familiar with the web application side of things. So this can of course include learning different coding languages like JavaScript, TypeScript, maybe some more basic web development technologies like HTML, CSS. And if you are going a bit more advanced, maybe even some React, Angular, Vue, there's definitely a lot of options out there for front-end technologies that you can look into. But if you're just starting out, I would actually just recommend looking into JavaScript and TypeScript since that will help you build out your basic foundational knowledge of web technologies. Okay, so outside of JavaScript and those basic web technologies, also being able to learn about different protocols is really important. For example, the difference between HTTP and HTTPS, understanding what a web certificate is, what makes a website secure, how does it store its cookies, does it have cookies, does it store anything in cache, what kind of encryption standards it's using, different things like that that are pretty high level but still will help you kind of understand what makes up a basic website is going to be also helpful when it comes to book bounties. And of course just knowing the hacking tools out there made for web application pen testing is really important which I mentioned earlier a few but honestly I think Burp Suite is one of the most important ones and it's actually the one that most of my mentors also recommend. Um, but if you're just starting out maybe using something like Zap or the Z attack proxy will be a helpful tool to use as a beginner as well as understanding basic Linux commands and hacking pen testing tools that live on the Linux command line which also brings me to Kali Linux which is the distro of Linux that is most commonly used by pen testers and it also has all of the tools that you'll need honestly for any kind of pen testing so learning those tools on Kali are going to be really helpful to add to your toolkit as well as just 
adding everything into your resume okay so after you get kind of that beginner knowledge of those tools as well as practicing on sites like hack the box try hack me then you can actually move on to actually testing your skills on purposefully vulnerable web applications and there's a bunch of them out there usually the dvwa is the most popular one that i hear about but i can put a list on the screen of the most commonly used vulnerable web applications and these are made for pen testers to be able to try to hack into so there's purposely holes in them and there'll be a really good way for you to practice your skills without it just being like a hack the box challenge where you're only looking really to exploit one or two vulnerabilities um, these web applications have multiple so you can really be creative in what you want to find and what you want to do and then moving on to actual targets that you can actually do some practice on for these bug bounty programs so there are different websites out there so a lot of the big name tech companies of course are on this list and they actually have their own live bug bounty programs where you can actually test their websites and essentially hunt for bugs so some of these include facebook google twitter um, apple is a big one and if you actually do find a bug then they actually will give you a pretty good sum of money for your efforts so on top of that experience on top of even putting this on your resume because i think this is big enough to put on your resume if you you know happen to find a serious bug from facebook or apple and of course these are bigger companies so almost all of the bug bounty hunters out there are probably looking for the same bugs that you are on these websites so it might be a little harder on these but there are other websites out there that i'll also talk about in a minute different smaller companies that have bug bounty programs running on other websites but the next thing i wanted to also talk about was just being able to stay on top of all the vulnerabilities and bug bounty news so i'm a huge fan of staying current with different hacking news hack okay my battery actually died so if you notice a slight change in lighting that is why but going back to what I was saying about keeping up with the most recent news about hacks and bug bounty programs so when you're in cybersecurity honestly being able to keep up with news and all the latest hacks all the latest vulnerabilities that are found is really important because every week there's something new and if you don't keep up with it then it becomes a lot harder for you then you're really missing out on a lot of valuable information and insights from other people or programs or hackers that have already found some kind of information that have posted and published this information out there for you to learn from so there's a lot of individual book bounty hunters out there that actually have their own blogs but i would consider also starting out with different things like hacker one which publishes articles on different hacks or bug reports but it's also a bug bounty platform where you can actually find out about different bug bounty programs out there another good one is port which is which also happens to have created burp suite so definitely a really good resource just to look into about different news and different updates in that bug bounty slash hacking world okay so now going into the actual different bug bounty programs out there so like i mentioned earlier about the big companies that actually have their own bug bounty program these are big tech companies like facebook google um, etc but also companies like intel cisco mozilla snapchat etc so you can actually go through those companies direct bug bounty programs now of course like i said earlier these are probably going to be a bit more competitive just because there are elite bug bounty hunters out there who already have their eyes on these websites so if you're just beginning and you're just getting a hold of your pen testing experience then of course start with the try hack me the hack the box things but after you kind of graduate from those and you find them to be maybe a bit more beginner then i would definitely try websites like hacker one bug crowd open bug bounty yes we hack another one that i also mentioned before was integrity and integrity i actually learned about like i mentioned before one of my mentors and he actually did a bunch of different practice challenges on integrity and they based their practice problems based on real bugs that people find so what better way to actually practice your bug bounty hunting skills than trying to hack into something that an actual bug bounty hunter has already hacked into and of course if you're a beginner there are many many guides out there for hackers that have actually completed this that you can review and refer to and definitely don't feel any shame about using those resources available to you especially as a beginner because when i first got started pen testing i was obviously not being able to find different bugs or hacks by myself you have to learn somewhere and start somewhere so definitely read those articles and read those guides just so you know what other pen testers and bug bounty hunters are thinking while they're doing this work because when it comes to bug bounty hunting there's so many more steps involved and i would really consider it more like red teaming but just on a specific website compared to pen testing because when it comes to pen testing you're really looking for common vulnerabilities they are usually like one or two maybe three steps to get in to hack into something or to list something down as an actual vulnerability but for a lot of these 
bug bounty programs they usually have multiple five six steps that you have to actually hack into and do and you have to be creative with the steps that you're taking um, because you don't know what the right route in is and that's why i feel like a background coming from not just cybersecurity can be really helpful because you're gonna think outside of the box no matter what every single time because you haven't seen problems like this before compared to someone who is a pen tester for five ten years who has already gotten used to like a certain flow or a certain pattern and you can honestly be more successful as a beginner going into this with fresh eyes compared to someone who might have years and years of experience. I mean, not saying that someone with years and years of experience isn't gonna do well doing bug bounty testing, but I'm just saying that a beginner perspective is also gonna help you think outside of the box with fresh thoughts. Okay, so that is it for this video. I hope this was helpful to any of you looking to get into bug bounty hunting and maybe even having it as a side hustle and eventually a career if that's something that you're interested in. It's essentially like freelance slash crowdfunded pen testing and the community of bug bounty hunters is very very active and helpful if you're looking to do different capture the flag challenges or if there's a new challenge on integrity there's always people commenting on their twitter and about different hints or different things that you might be able to look for so if you have questions that come up while you're doing this feel free to reach out to that community or read different articles and guides on how someone else may have already completed that program or challenge at the end of the day we're all learning and getting better together so if you're someone who's interested in getting into bug bounty hunting or just found it really interesting i think it's a really really good way to kind of boost your resume and add that real world pen testing experience that you can still really get for free um, before you ever start a pen testing job all right so thank you guys so much for watching if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications i post videos every wednesday at 2 p.m and sundays at 12 p.m and hopefully i will see you guys in my next video